What's up everyone, it's Marco here, and this video is for all you GH5 users. Recently, Panasonic released the 2.0 version update to the software, which allowed 400 megabits per second 4K video in all eye compression, which allows a 10-bit 422 4K codec to be recorded up to 30 frames per second internal to the camera. Now, there are a couple stipulations. The first one is you have to have really, really fast cards. The minimum here, you need to have a 60 megabyte per second, not megabit, meg a byte. So you have to get either the V60 or V90, but Panasonic only guarantees V90 series cards and they are whoppingly expensive cards. Panasonic actually makes their own and they're about $500 for a 128 gigabyte card. Thankfully, I picked up something a little cheaper than that. That allows me to record 4K right now at 400 megabits per second, which works out to be about 50 megabytes per second. Now, the reason for me to make this video isn't for me to talk about SD cards and the ones you need to buy for the GH5, but is it really worth it to record in 400 megabits per second in all I at 30 frames or 24 frames a second internal to the camera, or can you get by recording 10-bit in 422 at 150 megabits per second in that long format, or maybe even 8-bit? Is there really a difference? And uh, just to give you guys a note, I am shooting this entire video right now, the one you're watching right now, in that 422, 400 megabits per second, but I'll be switching between that. I'll go to 8-bit 420, I'll go to 10-bit 422 at 150 megabits per second, and compare that all I with the long compression that's built into the camera. Now, the major difference between all I and that long format is all I basically is every frame is processed. There is no interlacing between the frames. Now, in that long format basically takes a frame, then the next frame, it kind of guesses if there's any motion in there. So it's a little bit of interlacing in terms of where motion and things go. So sometimes things can come up like motion artifacts or other artifacts in the video. So usually all I is a better codec to record in, but it's a very intensive codec and there's a lot of processing happening internally in the camera. Now the bright side is if you're recording all eye or long, your computer is going to like all eye a lot better because a lot of that processing is already done internal in the camera and not in your computer. If you do the long format, your computer basically has to work that out and figure out if anything moves in the next frame. So let's go ahead and dive right into the comparison. I'll tell you the details of what is being recorded right now, starting from Right now, I am recording in all I 422 10-bit at 400 megabits per second in the MOV file built in to the Panasonic GH5. All right, now this clip is being recorded in 4K at 10-bit 422, but at 150 megabits per second in that long GOP type of codec. So right now my computer is doing most of the work and that is actually figuring out what's happening in frame by frame other than the camera. So we'll see about the difference in quality. Let me do some comparisons and show you between 400 megabits per second and this 150 megabits per second in that 10-bit 422. And lastly, now we're shooting in 4K 8-bit 420 at 100 megabits per second in that long GOP codec. So now we'll see the difference between 400 megabits per second 150 megabits per second, 422, and now 4208 bit at 800 megabits per second, all in 3840 by 2160 resolution from the Panasonic GH5. All right, so I'm back at 422 10-bit, 400 megabits per second, all I internal to the GH5. That is a mouthful of stuff to talk about. Uh, but to give you an idea of what I'm doing in post, basically all this was being shot in Vlog internal to the GH5 onto an SD card, not an external recorder. I'm going to be bringing it into Final Cut Pro, applying my color correction, making it look as lifelike as possible. Uh, and then I'll be applying the same color correction to every clip. I am not changing it. This is all controlled. It's night outside. There's no light coming from the outside. It's all just the natural light here in my kitchen. So I'll be doing the same color correction and I'll just kind of show you the difference between all those three codecs. Now, obviously the color correction is gonna work the best 
in that all eye compression because you have that 422 10-bit color space and you also have uh, just a, a, a deeper and larger bit rate of video and data to work with, but it really shouldn't matter all too much. And if it really does look different, then I'm going to be myself really, really shocked. So hopefully this video will shine some light whether you need to be shooting in 400 megabits per second or stay with that 150 at 8-bit or 10-bit that's already available on the GH5. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave me a thumbs up below. If you haven't already subscribed, follow me on Twitter at Marco M. Hanna, same as Instagram, Marco M. Hanna. Ask me questions about the GH5, and hopefully I'll be making some more videos about the GH5 because I just picked one up. I've been a GH4 user for a very long time. I was a huge advocate for GH4, and now I'm really happy to have the GH5 in-house and starting to shoot video, especially with that vlog on board. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.